but that's more obnoxious or more painful to the person coming home expecting that. If I'm expecting you to cook and you didn't cook, that's going to be a lot of emotions for me. If you're expecting me to do something and I ain't do it, you're going to be disappointed. You want to get your birth together? <laughs> it looks like it's attacking you this whole time. It's a to... hiccup type of oh, kind. Of. Okay. Was... <laughs> I hate his ass. He said, get your throat together. <laughs> Oops. Huh? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Codependent Podcast, and we've got some bad news for you. Turns out, black marriage is dead. (laughs) According to a New York Times article from 2021, uh, only 9% of adults were unmarried in 1970. 9% of adults 25 to 50 years old. Right, right. 25 to 50 years old were unpartnered in 1970, single. And in 2020, when was the study? In 2019, the study revealed that 29% of Asian people were unpartnered or single. 33% of white people and 59% of black people, 62% of black women. So black women are the most single, but overall 59% of black people, 25 to 50 years old are single. Um, And that number is four to five times higher uh, than when our grandparents were running around this thing. So What's that costing us? Um, Is that bad? Uh, Is it only bad? What do you see? Just in general, what's your opinion on the stats? Um, Well, it's saying black marriage is dead. Or dying. Or or, dying. uh I think I question what is alive, right? Meaning... Black marriage at some point may have been considered more alive, but where the marriage is living, where the marriage is thriving. Mm. So it seems like, oh, people aren't getting married, but in the past, were they happily married? Ah, uh, okay. So quality and quantity type thing. That's a good point. That's a good point. The numbers may be coming down, but maybe in gen- uh, um, generally speaking, those 60% of people could have a higher quality of life yes. than especially the the uh, uh, 62% of black women maybe their quality of life is risen even though you know they're single and, and not all of them or whatever but at first glance it looks like a damning prospect mm-hmm. that people are struggling and sad and single you know mm-hmm. there's a connotation of that mm-hmm. But that's a good point. Um, but that's maybe part of what we're talking about because improving. part of the changes over time is that our values change. Mm-hmm. The things we want change, the things we like change, the things yeah. we value change over time. Yeah. So you're going to see that in society, including in relationships, right? At some point, marriages, that's kind of what I mean, quality. We know historically marriages were created based on necessity. Yes. And need. And so we don't know if those were happily married people. Right. We kind of even see a lot of history that suggests maybe not so much, right? Also within that, there are certain truths that are going to always exist in society, right? Like the numbers have gotten worse across the board. But the numbers for black people have always been worse across the board. Right. That's also. Other, the other, uh, in, in the article said it too, um, the other races also are seeing greater greater numbers of single people yes but right uh black people are at the highest but we don't have the data on what that looked like back then yes exactly we don't have a comparison but i also think that's part of the narrative right like if a group of people are made to seem less than why would i want to marry into them yeah so that's a good point and i i guess you could say that's in the data as well uh, if like 55% of black men are single, but 62% of black women, 
women you could see that uh maybe there's more freedom of choice in the races from the black man uh maybe there are less options from a societal like a social perspective um if black women pair off with other races at a lesser rate yeah and their own right because like that's a part of compatibility and matching up is desire right we don't like to get into it because it makes us uncomfortable but like in order for a match we both have to desire each other right so it's not that the black woman is necessarily unopen to those other races oh, but those other races also have to be open to them True. and in my therapeutic clinical history and life history i've always seen the narrative that other races didn't want to marry black period like asian latin whatever like it's always kind of considered woof Whoa, the wild side. The wild side. <laughs> but that's part of the narrative in society. Matter of fact, when we watch podcasts, we hear that narrative. You hear a lot of men saying, um, white women are more submissive, Latin women are more submissive, yeah. Asian women are more submissive, black women are stubborn. Like you hear some of that same narrative with Latin women, they're feisty, black women are feisty. So this is what we're talking about with values changing over time. At one point, the main value from what I hear people want in marriage is like submission from the woman well society has a narrative that black women aren't submissive so that's going to make them a less desirable choice for some people yeah not necessarily for everybody but for some people that's going to be a less desirable choice it's not necessarily based on fact but if that's the narrative that becomes certain people's belief system yeah there's an idea that certain races are more submissive even more than white you hear a lot about asian take off their shoes massage them like there's a doesn't mean it's true but there's a stereotype and a narrative yeah, yeah. that they're submissive they're gonna go with what you right, want right. tell you what you want right so that's what i mean about quality too because that might make you want to get married and might have a marriage but is it a happy marriage right and are both people in the relationship happy and is it healthy so that's where the values have changed because for so long, if I needed to be married, it's not about what I want. It's not even about what I need, really. It's just sort of like I need this for some other reason. So like we're taking care of that concern. But if I take care of one concern, I still got 10, 20 other concerns or needs or right, values. Right. So we're like, oh, marriage has lost. We don't value marriage. OK, but what did we get from marriage? So did we lose all the values that came with marriage or did we lose certain things that we're seeing in society are not as desirable? And that's 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 a good that's a good question. Segue into kind of what I was thinking. The values, where did they go? Blah, blah, blah. People have not stopped interacting. Mm -hmm. Black people, Asian you know, people mm -hmm. in general of the, all these ages in the article are interacting at the same rate, I would assume, as they did in the 1970s. Perhaps even More. interacting at a greater rate. With social media. Because social media loosen social rules, which allow women to be out and about on their own. Mm -hmm. uh, without, That's true. Without being yeah, judged. Yeah, no, no chaperones and chauffeurs. Exactly. Yeah. So, so there should be more interactions between people. So if the interactions are increased or the same or whatever, but the marriage is way down. Ooh, what? that's a good one. You see yeah. what I mean? Like, like, what? what's the change? How is our interactions changed by this stat? Like, if we can mm. go a little bit under the data. Oh, I like this question. I don't know if you remember you and I watched some type of documentary show about brain development and choices and what mm -hmm. they were saying is if i walk into an ice cream shop and i have three to five choices yeah. right so strawberry chocolate vanilla mint chocolate chip chocolate chip cookie dough whatever right i'm actually more likely to be satisfied with one of those options than if i walk into a store and they got 32 flavors yeah right yeah. no matter what i choose there's a possibility <laughs> 20 something other possibilities yeah. that damn should i have chosen this would i have liked this better would i've wanted this better wow. so when you're saying we're interacting more that doesn't necessarily mean better quality interactions right that doesn't mean more fulfilling or satisfying interactions and am i even judging those interactions objectively right because like we just said if i have five i'm more satisfied does that mean that that fifth or whatever choice you made is better than the other choice you made? No, you're just not aware that there's all these other possibilities out there for you. Yeah. And that's a part of your contentment, right? Like if you give me strawberry, chocolate or vanilla, I'm going to be really satisfied with that strawberry because I don't even like chocolate and vanilla like that. 
Yeah. But if you gave me only strawberry, I may not be content because that's not my ideal, right? So that's where perception comes in. What are my expectations? If I have none, strawberry is great. Yeah. If I've been craving ice cream, I probably imagine certain flavors. Now you bring me strawberry, that might not be so exciting and great anymore. And so I guess that that also makes sense. Like we said, if things were really strict and conservative and controlled before, now it's a wide open world and everybody's willy nilly. We are empowered by choice, which would make you get into the 31 flavors, Baskin Robbins mm -hmm. mental scenario. As I interact with a guy or gal or non-binary, whatever you like, mm -hmm. if I interact with these people and I know I'm about to have three more interactions this week, I already got it planned. Wow, the date on Monday, it just doesn't hold that much significance. And there's already some competition based on expectations, right? Like this date's taking me here. This date's taking me there. This date looks like this. This date looks like that. Doesn't mean anything about the outcome of the date, but I've right. now anticipated certain things, right? And that's going to come even into the upfront initial date. If I'm not that interested or invested, I'm not expecting the date to be that amazing necessarily, mm. but that also allows you to pleasantly surprise me, right? Mm. If I have extremely high expectations coming into this date, I have more possibility of being disappointed. That's what the concept of ba working into Baskin Robbins is. I'm expecting this to be great. You got 31 flavors. I'm going to love one of them, mm -hmm. but you ain't tasting all 31. So right. what makes you think you're going to get the one out of 31 statistic that you like? That's actually a lower statistic than one in five. So maybe the standards have risen. Or ratio. For, for people as they're interacting, having relationships. There's just not a huge emergency to make any of these relationships forever and long term. And I'm starting to think maybe there's a benefit to this. Like may maybe it's a more pure interaction, a more layered and honest, authentic world that we have where we don't just, oh, I'm 20. It's about that time. Let's lock it down. It is a more let's let's bounce around and experience life. Let's explore. Let's realize I'm changing. This person doesn't fit with how I'm feeling anymore. Maybe they feel that about me. It's fluid. We separate. We come together. We have poly Ooh. mixed in now. I'm glad you, you know said that saying? because we also said the 25 to 50. So that goes to what you're saying. Is the shift that people are marrying more later? Because before married later was like less taboo, yes. less desired, right? Like, oh, you're so old now. How are you going to have kids? Now people are probably also having less kids. Yeah. So everything is kind of getting pushed back on some level. But I agree with you. It's also like, do I need to? Right? Yeah. Like. It's Before, an actual choice. It wasn't much choice. I want companionship. Women can't be alone with men. Right. So you can't just be friends. Well, I want or children. You I can't want children. have them out of wedlock. Can't have them out of wedlock. Can't. Yeah. Which also forces you into dysfunctional relationships if I want this thing, right? So yeah. that's why I said quality because we look at it from the perspective a lot of times like the value of marriage has decreased. Like people don't value relationships. People don't value loyalty. People don't value commitment. All of that could have increased. That's what I'm starting to think. Yes, man. all of that could have increased. The value if I goes up Absolutely. as I don't choose it, as it's an actual choice I have. I can pay my bills, raise children, travel, and do all these things without a ring, without a partner. So if I pick it, you really I want to make sure it's you right. You really wanted it. If yeah, you chose it, you, absolutely. You really now not that divorce isn't high and stuff like that too, but it kind of goes back to the point of it's fluid, right? If the marriage isn't working and we separate and move apart. And some people could look from the outside, particularly as I was looking this up. Lots of religious sites focus on the family, family institute of this and this. A lot of religious places seem to have, and I know I'm assuming, more angst that the marriage is dying because it's kind of a focal stronghold of, the, of that system. True, but also for me as a therapist, it's an angsty thing for me Okay. because I tell my clients every single time as they go through divorces and separations, when we're on the same team, there's a motivation to work together. Yeah. Defaulted into the system. Yeah. We're on the same team. I ain't even got to necessarily like you. You see that in sports. We don't like each other, but my money and your money attached to each other. Yeah. So now we're going to bust our asses to get together and do better and make things happen and goal. accomplish things. Absolutely. But if we're no longer a team, we're not on the same page. That makes it more difficult for each one of us, especially the children, if we're already a unit. 
if we're not a unit, cool. But if we're already talking about relationship and kids, it can be more challenging if we're not on the same team. Does yeah. that mean we need to be married? Not necessarily. Because, again, you said the divorce rate was high. Yeah. And marriages were not necessarily happy. Right? right. So it's to me learning the skills to make it a quality relationship. Yeah. I don't know those numbers of how much people are doing that or not doing that. I know when I do couples counseling, a lot of... Uh, it's like one half is. I'm not even going to say it's always women. It's always men. It's always one person. It's, it's what? <laughs> in the equation. One person in the equation is researching answers to the problem. One person in the equation is reading books to fix the problem. Oh. One person in the equation is going to therapy to try to get better and help the problem. It's one. But this is supposed to be one plus one equals two. Which means how can if I'm only doing it and you're not, it's not going to work. And I can't control your motivation, which is why the monogamy thing is hard. Because if we're locked in this for life, I have to endure you. You have to <laughs> endure me. If I'm telling you for the next six months to a year, I don't feel like working. If I'm single, that's on you. If we're married, so I got to carry you for six months to a year <laughs> and vice versa. Yeah. Because we look at it like I'm just not going to work. I made it extreme, right, but right. I'm sick. I'm depressed. I lost my job like yeah. real life things. Oh, I got into some type of an accident or some type of injury or some type of illness that's impacted my ability to work. Right. Or I done snapped at somebody at the job. So snapped at the person at the job, <laughs> lost the job, got fired. Right. These are real shit that happens yeah. that now my partner's pissed because now I have to carry this. Which is real. Because that's more pressure. Yeah. And as we argue and disconnect. Now we stop doing the things to keep us together. We're not having sex because we're irritated. We're annoyed with each other. We're probably not talking because we're annoyed and irritated with each other. We're not laughing together. And then what do we do? Focus on the problems. You're not doing this. 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 Who wants to be in that environment all the time? With someone constantly telling you you're not doing something. People look at families like... A family is dysfunctional. No, to be in a family by default is dysfunctional because you have four, however many people, two, three, four, five other people telling you how you should be for their comfort. Yeah. To That's a along. mini society. Yeah. Absolutely. How is that? We see in society that don't work. We see in society wars, fights all over the place. So we think that the, the smaller system, the family unit, ain't going to have none of that. Right. It will. But we haven't been taught how to handle that. We haven't been taught in life how to handle conflict. We have wars still, which means we're having wars in our family, which means we're having wars in our communities, which means we're having wars within ourselves. Yeah. And it's wars bubbling over ourselves. into wherever I am. Right. If I have a war inside me, that's going to come out wherever I go. <laughs> don't matter if I go to work. Don't matter if I go home. Don't matter if I go to church. That war is coming with me. And if I've never learned, which we see in history, our society's not really learned until more recently to focus on mental health, to focus on self-development. Thank you very much. Our society not till recently started focus on mental health and, and uh, so we have we have LGBTQ uh, equality coming. We have women equality, you know, that we're focused on, we're mm -hmm. working on some racial of us, equality, mm -hmm. racial. Um, my point is all these societal pushes around awareness, loving, uh, equality, blah, blah, blah. How do you think the mental health in particular, um, because I think all these activist movements are mental health based too. Like mm -hmm. let's literally pay women more and stop groping them. That's, mm -hmm. that is a mental health, mm -hmm. uh, I conversation. Think activism is mental health. Yeah. How do you see the like opposite correlation or correlation between the marriage rates decreasing and the mental health and community freaking programs and movements increasing. soaring. Oh, what do you think that perfect? We just heard black data is six lakh black just said it in his song, right? Her confidence grew. Now she's throwing it back different. Do we not think that that's true? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> now she's putting it on me different. Why? Okay. 
people don't realize how much confidence affects everything you do, right? If I don't feel good about myself, why do I feel sexy? Right. Why do I feel productive? Why do I feel like a, 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 a contribution to this job, a contribution to this family, a contribution to this world, right? Yeah. If I don't feel good about myself, that's wrapped up in feeling like I don't really need to be here. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. And you want that person to be confident in their interactions with you if they're not confident within themselves. Yes. So we never studied mental health we never studied like character development like outside of certain pockets right like you hear it according to society what's best for the church what's best for the school what's best for the family that don't tell you nothing about individual development how mm. do i determine what's best for me how do i determine when to stop doing what's best for the community or the school or the family and or the focus church on and focus on yeah. self-love right we're not taught that we're taught don't be selfish sacrifice love Forever. others <laughs> take care of but that's what we do that's how we apply it yeah it's like blanket statements yeah, There's the, the no nuance. context. There's no nuance, yeah. which goes into what you're saying. If I haven't had nuance to focus on my goals, when you watch Bridgerton, yeah. when we watch these Victorian shows, what do you see? The pressure to marry for the family. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Oh, you being selfish. Yeah. You are being this. You're being you're that. Shaming you're us shaming us. You're just honoring us. In the you're screwing culture. up all of our things because you want to be happy, and that's crazy to the family. Which is where society has developed because now it's crazy to us to arrange a marriage. It wasn't at one point in society at all. That was the norm. Your parents picked your partner. How could you be happy with that choice if you had no say in it? Right. Right? So, like, again, was it happy back then? Was it healthy? Was it thriving and alive? Like, we're looking at it as live or dead, but life is more black and white. So, what if I'm alive but I'm in a coma? Am I living if I'm in a coma? If, I, if it's brain paradise. activity and heart activity, <laughs> yeah. but I'm not doing anything. Yeah, exactly. Is that really living life? So people are like, oh, marriage is dead. Values are dead. Was it alive then? So do you, th do you think that there is a direct connection between people starting to learn about inner work, uh, self-care, emotional awareness? Absolutely. And single people increasing and i guess that would make sense yeah right? because if i don't know my worth i'm gonna take whatever you give me right that's why people don't fully understand like domestic violence this uh uh abusive situations even why like, children stay talking to parents that were abusive right that's a domestic violence abusive situation but we're told to stay with our parents not necessarily partners right right so i'm taught all of these things by someone else yeah so i can't help but think it's true i'm a child yeah. As I mature and grow and develop, I start to think, is this really true for me? These are what they said. This is what my teacher said. This is what my parents said. This is what this person said. A natural part of maturity is starting to question what you've been told. That's natural. That's literally psychological, one-on-one, -on -one, child development, adolescent development. You're going to start to question things in your teenage and young adult years. You're going to start determining for yourself, how do I want to live? Not how what they said. My mom said this. My dad said this. My teachers, church, everybody's telling me these things. I'm not happy with that. So what makes sense for me? There's no doubt in my mind that as you start to question that, things will change. Yeah. Values will change. Morals will change. You told me the most important values, the family. Yeah. Right? That's what you told me. And you told me family should do X, Y, and Z. Right. Now I'm seeing you didn't do none of that. <laughs> but you're putting the pressure on me to do it because we're family. Yeah. You don't do it. You're not doing X. You're not doing Y. You're not doing Z. But you're expecting me to. Mm, is this really true? Yeah. Because you're not doing X, Y, and Z, but you're saying we're family. And you're saying I got to do X, Y, and Z if we're family. Wow. But yeah. you're not doing it. So you start to question. You're like, I ain't got to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I stop. And I see some people still fuck with me some still people some people still rock with me some people are like you're still cool so do i really need to do that to get love to be accepted to have a community or a place that i belong so that's a part of the development you start to test that's what children do that's a part of maturity i'm testing the waters i'm seeing if this is true or not for me you want me to walk around the rest of my life because someone told me this we learn as kids do what you're told you start to become teenagers, what do your parents say? You just doing that because your friends told you to? They, they told you you're going to do whatever anybody tell you? So you're starting to learn. You told me at one point to, to do what I was told, but that's not expected of me anymore. Now I'm expected to make some of my own choices and some of my own decisions. And that means it may not be exactly what you told me to do. I've never seen any adult 
living today that still does exactly everything that their parent told them to do. Right. But when it comes to their child, they're still expecting that. Right. You don't see that hypocrisy? Are you living your current life at 58 years old the way your mom told you to 30 years ago? Probably not. But you want your kid to live exactly as you're telling them. So you're not expecting the same freedom of others that you want yourself, which is the right. hypocrisy of humans, right. which is how society is muted. Because I want to grow and develop, but you can't. But by default, we're all going to grow. And the reason I don't want you to grow is because you may change in a way I don't want you to change. And that scares me. Because as you're growing and changing, what I value in you could change. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's what we're seeing in society. People are saying, I want a man who's chivalrous. Men ain't chivalrous no more. I want a woman who cooks. Women don't cook no more. That's what you value. That's what you want in right. the other person. Does that person value cooking and cleaning? Does that other person value chivalry or whatever? Or was I doing this to get something? And that's what people don't realize. If I'm cooking to get a man and I'm no longer trying to get a man, I might not be cooking no more, right? If I'm doing certain things to get a woman and that's no longer something I'm seeing is gonna happen the way I want, I might stop doing some of those things. But now you get into the heart of who are you really? Am I really someone who likes to cook or was I cooking because everybody told me to cook? Right. And everybody expected me to cook and I needed to cook in order to be married, in order to survive. Now I don't need to cook to survive. Now I have options. I got DoorDash. I can order food. I can cook for myself. I can do all kinds of things. Which makes the choice to do once you're, once you're no longer doing it by compulsion, it makes it a more natural, uh, intentional, and fuller choice. Or not choice, right? Because a choice or, is to or, not do it, right. right? And that's also a fuller choice, but that's more obnoxious or more painful to the person coming home expecting that. If I'm expecting you to cook and you didn't cook, that's going to be a lot of emotions for me. If you're expecting me to do something and I ain't do it, you're going to be disappointed. You want to get your birth together? <laughs> it looks like it's attacking you this whole time. It's trying. a hiccup type of oh, kind. Okay. Was... <laughs> I hate his ass. He said, get your throat together. Oops. Huh? <laughs> Man. Oh. Uh. I think... Uh, I do see a correlation because I see it with my clients, right? And from therapy, we say sometimes in therapy, things get better before they get worse. Why? Because I'm more aware. Like you said, if I'm doing things on compulsion, I'm probably not paying attention. So I'm not really picking up on what's actually happening. I'm just in default. And certain extremes become noticeable. I'm not paying attention to everything in the room right now. There's a thousand things in the room right yeah. now. Yeah. They're all there. Am I seeing them? Yes and no. My periphery can tell there's but the things brain in the is room, not, but yeah. my brain's focused on you. My brain's focused here. My brain's doing certain things, which filters some of that out. That's how we start to develop and live life. I can't take anything and everything in at one time. So I have to filter out certain information and I have to focus on certain information. Well, if I'm so busy surviving, I'm not really having enough time to focus to look around, to yeah. observe, to pay attention. So I'm taking things as they come, which means I'm pushing through. You and I just said that. Thanksgiving, push through, push through, push through, push through. Now, exhaustion. Why? Because I'm no longer in adrenaline push through survival mode. Now I can sit down and now I can assess. And now that I can sit down and assess, I see I'm fucking exhausted. Yeah. In the moment, you're not assessing. You're doing, doing, doing. Got to do this, got to do this, got to do oh, oh, oh. It's like an athlete. In the middle of the fourth quarter during the action, he might feel the tired, but the focus of the game is pulling you. Not even just tired, injury. Yeah. How many athletes say, I got off, I went to the doctor, it was serious. Yeah. It was worse than I thought. My dad told me about a basketball injury. This man was walking around for like a week with a broken toe or foot or something. He ain't know. We're so used to enduring pain and pushing through, and it's not that bad. That's a toxic ass thought in some ways. It ain't that bad forces me to stay in something that is bad. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it's not that bad. Why do I want bad? Because I'm not conditioned to go for good. Even when you hear people talk, how are you doing? Fine. You don't hear people say I'm having a great day. Oh, today was fabulous. Today was amazing. Or even today was horrible. <laughs> it sucked. You have learned to mute yourself in so many ways so that everything's okay. Everything's fine. Everything's good. Is it though? Right. Is it bad to say I want marriage only if it's amazing and not if it's going to be an okay marriage or I can endure it? Right. 
like you said, does that mean I'm valuing it more to say I do think it's important, but I want to make sure it's really good if I'm going to do it? Well, OK, so this is how I want to close. I want I want to know your actual personal feelings because mm -hmm. we haven't really done that part yet. What are your actual personal feelings? And you mentioned some anxiety you have uh, for, for the children, for, for, for this and that. But where do you sit with all of this and like what's your inner conversation? For marriage or not marriage? Uh, just uh, of the switch we're having, of the switches we're having in the society that are. Ooh, my that personal we can see. feelings? Yeah. Eesh. My personal feelings are that we rush into marriage before we know ourselves. We rush into relationship. So my personal feeling is that the first offense is childhood. We're so burnt out from childhood, right? Like just imagine as adults, we don't like being told what to do. Men don't like being told what to do, but women don't either. But we have these narratives in society that I'm supposed to, you're not, which means you should be okay with it, but they're not. Like who's okay being told what to do all the time? I've never met a person, including a kid, but a kid is expected to be okay with that, to have no thought, to have no opinion, to literally be told everything they're supposed to do all throughout childhood. Suddenly I'm 19 years old, make all your decisions on your own. How am I supposed to do that? How am I supposed to make decisions now on my own? How am I supposed to now get married and be in a relationship? I don't know nothing about that. So the first mistake is we don't teach kids to be to live, to know themselves, to do things. So now we're 1920, we want a relationship because we wanted them sooner. But we're told it wasn't important. Don't worry about that. Focus on school, focus on career, focus on things. So we delay it. So by the time we get there, we're so run mad to get into it. We don't know shit about it though. We don't know nothing about conflict resolution, having a relationship. We don't know what expectations to have in a relationship or a marriage. So now we're coming in with what we think based on what we're not getting from childhood. Okay. Based on what I didn't get from my parents, based on what I was never able to do here, I never could do this. Now I want this person to resolve all that. Did you resolve that in your own life? How could someone else resolve all your problems that you can't resolve or haven't even attempted to resolve? So to me, it's not that marriage has to be bad, but why are we so run mad for marriage? Why is the conversation always that marriage and family is suffering and the solution is to fix marriage? How are you going to fix the marriage? You ain't fix the people. Mm. How are you going to fix the family? You ain't fix the people. So now we're married. Okay, so it's fixed. Oh, I see. There's this, there's this anxiety around the institution of marriage as this intangible concept. As this entity. At, yeah, that to protect, to invest our emotions, fears, and worries into protecting the idea of people joining together. But maybe not a, a, a focus on the, the people who yes. make up these unions. Like you just said, we don't value LGBTQ. They're fighting for rights. They're telling you, I don't feel valued. Women are telling you, I don't feel valued. Men are saying they don't feel valued. How are you going to be in a relationship when you don't feel valued? By people in society. These are people. So now we're supposed to be in a relationship together. That's the myth that we say. Like We create this idea that you'll be okay because I want you to be. That's it. What is it based on? You should be. What, what? What does that mean? How do you know I should be okay? How do you know I should be happy? In relation to what? Life, oh, right? Because okay. if I'm not a happy, which is what I hear a lot, when couples are coming to me and things are not working, it's someone's fault. Not theirs, someone else's, right? He's not doing this. She's not doing that. Over and over again, my question, what makes you think they should? It's simply rooted in the fact that you want them to. Right. That's insane. <laughs> but it's, it's very natural. That makes sense. I want sense. you to give me a million dollars. Every day of my life, I want somebody to give me a million dollars. Yeah. What makes me think they should? The That's what I'm saying. Part. The should part. What makes me think you should walk up after working your ass off for all of your money and doing everything you needed to do and you should hand it to me because I want it? Why would you want to do that, right? So we look at relationships from what I want. I want women to cook. I want a husband to open the door for me. I want someone to stand up for me. Okay, but what makes you think they should do that? Love, I guess, to wrap it up, people would say. What makes you think they should love you? Well, they, well they're a lot of times expressing it up front. 
at least with the words, you know, saying, I love you. I love that even more. What makes you think their love that they want to give you is what you want? Right, right. <laughs> but there's an expectation, I'm getting married for you to like, take out the trash, yeah. you to have sex with me, you to talk to me all the time. I know people married that don't talk. I know people married that ain't having sex. I know people married that ain't doing the chores correctly or at all or whatever. So you're getting married for that? That's what I'm saying. Like, what is you? Say, what are you really saying the values in society are leaving? Because yeah. I don't want to cook. I'm not loyal. Because I don't want to cook or clean. I'm not going to contribute nothing. What if I told you I'll go work and you stay home and cook and clean? Right. And I'm fine with that. What if I told you a thousand percent I will be fine with that? You fine with that? A lot of people don't want to do that because you're not being honest, right? When people say value, here's what we say. I value the janitor. I don't want to be a janitor. I would never be a janitor. You don't value the janitor, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want you to be janitorial, but I don't never do janitorial work. Okay. But I want you to. I don't need to like what you like. If you love cooking and cleaning, great. Now you have a job cooking and cleaning. You love your janitorial work. Now you don't have to be upset or happy because you ain't doing it for me. You're doing it for yourself. You love what you do. But if you're going to work for me, now you want me to value your job, right. your work, what you're doing, what you're contributing. I didn't tell you to do that. Why would I value that? Right. And I'm not saying there's no value to it, but this is what I mean when people are saying it. We're not defining. What does value look like? Does value mean that if I value something, I have to do it? I think people should save whales. I'm not going out and saving not one whale personally. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I don't care that much. That's what I mean about value. Do I not yeah. care at all? No, I do care. If I had enough money, maybe I'd send some money over there. Yeah. Do I care enough to go do it? I don't. Yeah. But people don't like that. You don't care enough to save the value? No. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> yeah. If that's what you need to be happy, don't choose me. I don't. Yeah. I can't manifest it. I can't make it up. I can't manufacture excitement for something I'm not excited about but I see that going wrong right I got pregnant you're not excited you want me to fake it <laughs> so let's flip that you want me to fake it in sex you don't but you want me to fake it here that's what I'm saying we don't really but what we say is yes fake it convincingly yeah <laughs> fake it Lie just be convincing well. do it well <laughs> so that I don't know you're lying so I can believe the fantasy in the yeah. myth so I can keep moving in this direction yeah. as opposed to like you're saying now it feels like a devalue because we're breaking myths I don't think you have to get married or not but I do think if you want any kind of successful relationship friendship work relationship relationship with self relationship with a partner it's going to require you to do some healing and most of society hasn't started that process so we're all upset that we don't have a pool of healed people to pull from you're not even a whole healed person so how can you pull from a whole healed like we want what we're not yeah yeah We want a sugar daddy. Are you a sugar mama? Not even able to be one, but you want someone to take all of their resources and provide for you. Even symbiotic animal relationships are supposed to have some form of mutualism. Right. <laughs> or else you're just a parasite. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. If it's not mutually beneficial, it's parasitic. It's a lot of parasites. It's a lot of parasites out here. And maybe that's the reason why these marriage numbers are declining. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, don't be a parasite. Don't be a parasite.